Hey guys, so I'm here chatting to a very special guest star. Now she is a voice actress you probably might remember as being the voice of Liana from Battle Beta Man, Tachikoma and other characters from Ghost in the Shell standalone complex, various characters in the Digimon series, as well as playing in a whole variety of video games and live action series. Please welcome the amazing Peggy O'Neill. Peggy, how are you doing? Hi. Hey Simon, I'm great, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Well, let's let's begin. So, how did you get started as a voice actress? Where did it all begin for you? Well, I was working on camera. I was working on a television show called uh, Sequest and Fortune Hunter in Florida. And the director that I was working with had an actress that they needed to replace her voice. And I had never done any voice ever before. I had no idea what they wanted me to do. And uh, I went ahead and went into the studio and replaced all of her lines. Wow, and and from there it was that was really kind of the beginning for your for your career in a way. For my voiceover career, absolutely. Um, shortly afterwards, I moved to Los Angeles and I started doing ADR on television shows like Dawson's Creek and Dark Skies, Walker Texas Ranger, a whole bunch of network series. And then I decided I would take an animation class with the wonderful Susan Blue. And from there is when um, all the anime started to take off for me. That's that's amazing. And who inspired you the most to really start as an actor? Who were who were your some of your, some of your greatest influences? Oh gosh, I never thought I was going to be an actor. I was way too shy. I didn't think I was going to do it for a living. <laughs> I just kept doing it, and I did well. So I kept doing some more, and I did some more, and it just kind of happened. It was very strange. Wow. And one of the voice roles that you started in the past was uh, Poke was in Power Rangers from uh, Wild Force as the, as the voice of the Wedding Dress Org. Was that really yeah. kind of the beginning as your as your time in voice acting? Was that really kind of where it led you to say, "Okay, I'm going to become a voice actress"? No, actually, um, that came a little bit later. I started working with Saban. Um, that Susan Blue class that I mentioned. Yes. I had a, there was another actress in the class, and she said, "Oh, I think you're really good. Do you have a demo?" And I said, "Gosh, no. I just started." And um, she said, "Well, I'll just take your recordings from the class, and I want to pass them on to someone." And I didn't know that her boyfriend was called a Franco, and he did all of the casting for all of the Saban shows. So I got to work on Flint the Time Detective and a couple of early series, and then um, shortly after that, I auditioned for Shinzo, and Yukumo on Shinzo was the really big break for me. That's fantastic. What One of the roles I remembered you playing the most, as I mentioned uh, in my little introduction there, was Liana from Battle Beta Man. How did you end up getting to play Liana? Um, it was a lot of people who had worked with us at Saban. Terry Leo Malley was producer on Digimon. And she got that show and was producing it over at D Spot and asked me to come and read for the part. I loved that show. I thought that was a great show. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic series. And of course, in that very same series, you worked with uh, Dave Wittenberg and Brian Beacock, who you also worked yeah. with in uh, Digimon uh, Digimon Tamers, I think, uh, playing Susie Wong. Have uh -huh. you? How, did you ever have like any connections with uh, those with those two in particular outside of the studios? Like, did you ever get to talk to them uh, during the recording sessions and such? Um, I got to know Dave a little bit. I don't really know um, the other actor. What's really strange is when you do dubbing for anime, you go into the booth by yourself for the most part. Mm. So you're alone, and you never <laughs> see the other person that you're actually having a conversation with and uh, performing dialogue with. You do it separately. But what's really fun and interesting about Dave Wittenberg is I kind of went back over my series and I realized that he almost always plays my brother. So if you go back and look at other series, he ends up playing my brother or a brother <laughs> figure. And uh, Steve Bloom and Crispin Freeman often end up playing like the love interest, um, Darsha and Hamana and Wolf's Reign. Uh, so it's kind of funny that the same characteristics carry through from show to show. I, I actually have discovered that in a lot of the shows that you've actually starred in, that somehow Dave Wittenberg always plays like a very brotherly or fa fatherly uh -huh. figure to, the, to your character in a way, and even have some of the same voice actors from Battle Beater Man, like you mentioned Stephen Bloom and Crispin Freeman in the, in the series as well. Right. 
And working with uh, in Digimon, of course, how did you end up uh, getting started with the Digimon series? Well, Digimon, um, I actually didn't start working on it until their second season. Um, they were already an established group of actors, and that's when Elizabeth introduced me to Paul, and I auditioned for all the shows. So by season two, they you'll notice my roles got bigger as they went on. The first season, I was Tally, who was the kind of, um, a June, rather. I was June... And she was uh, a sister, older sister of one of the characters, and she was a, a smaller role. But the next year, they gave me Tally and Susie, which were bigger roles. And then the fourth season, I was Ranamon, and she was one of the main, main bad guys in that season. So it kind of describes the arc of my career in voiceover, and that when I first started, I got the smaller roles. I was doing Walla in the background. And then as I progressed, I got bigger and bigger roles. That's fantastic. And as you mentioned, uh, we're working with Crispin Freeman. One of the other roles I remembered you playing in was uh, Scrap Princess, which had Crispin Freeman as one of the main characters, as well as Carrie Wal Walgreen and as uh -huh. many others. Yeah, I think Crispin also directed me in my episode on Scrap Princess, so that was kind of fun. Yeah. How, how did you find her uh, playing in, the, in that series? Um, I wasn't that deeply involved in that series, but I I played the pretend princess, who everybody thought was the scratch princess, but she really wasn't. So that was kind of a fun role to play. Wow. And in all the roles that you've done over your entire career, which one have you always found uh, resonated with you the most? I think Yakumo and Shinzo. Um, she's just very gentle. She's very much a uh, pacifist. And I think that, you know, anybody who's met me and knows me knows that I'm pretty gentle as well. <laughs> well but I can play bad guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as, as an actress and in any sort of profession in the entertainment industry, there's nothing wrong with being versatile. Thank you. I think so, too. I, I, <laughs> I'm not as, you know, broad, like my friend Felice Sampler and Mona Marshall, of course, they play all those wonderful boy characters. I have a little hard time playing the boys. I've only done a couple of those, so I'm not quite as versatile in range as they are. Well, Felice Sampler and Mona Marshall, they are both amazing voice actresses, and yeah. but but definitely you're, you're also one of the best as well. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate that. No, no problem. And as well as the animation work, you've also played in quite a few live action series, including a lot of movies as well, including... China Moon, Superboy, Seven Sundays, and Power Rangers Wild Force. Yes. What? what um, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right. <laughs> that's okay. Which one of those roles did you find, uh, did you enjoy working on the most? Oh, gosh, um, they're all different. I really enjoyed uh, the television series Sequest. I got to work with Roy Scheider. Uh, you can't... Uh, say no to that. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> and uh, Jean-Charles Takala was the director of Seven Sundays. And uh, for some reason, I was updating my bio and, and my resume, and I kind of looked back over his career. And um, I hadn't realized when I got the opportunity to work with him as a director that he was as incredibly um, well-rounded and diverse as he was. He'd worked with Jean Cocteau and uh, you know, I was just a, a young actor in Florida and didn't really realize the opportunity that I had when I got to work with him on Seven Sundays. So those are two <laughs> great experiences working on camera. That's amazing. And yeah. what, one of the other series that uh, you also played in was uh, Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex as uh, Tachi Koma and various other characters in the series. How did you yeah. end up uh, getting to play that, that role or those roles in particular? <laughs> just auditioned a lot of the Saban people ended up going over to the other studio um, it's been so long I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly how it came about but the touch comas were so much fun and they're so loved um, <laughs> I just did NDK a convention in Denver and I it was my very first convention and I was thrilled to be there and it was so sweet Keith uh, the person who runs it was like we wanted you to come because you did touch comas and I love touch comas <laughs> and would you sign my touch coma picture? So that show has a special place in my heart now because it got me into a really fantastic convention and uh, it was just really nice to be appreciated for a role like that. 
They are considered to be the mascot of the series, as is Pikachu of the Pokemon series. Yeah. You, you can almost see it that way. And one of the other roles that you're also, well, I also remember you playing the most was in Oreka 7 as one of uh, the main character's uh, children, Maida. <laughs> yeah. Ha I'm laughing. Um, I thought when we started that series that Diane was going to be my major character in that show. Um, she was ah. Renton's older sister. And so we really worked on refining that voice and getting that character together. And we thought Mater was just, you know, a one-time thing. So I made her more bratty than I probably would have <laughs> if I'd known she was going to be in every episode after that. Because she's kind of annoying. <laughs> but uh, both <laughs> characters are really fun. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 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 that is I mean, fantastic. I give myself a headache some days doing this session. She's so bratty. But it's but it must have been so much fun playing that sort of character, especially working alongside Stephanie Shee, Kate Higgins, and all of these amazing voice cast. It must have They're been so. Brilliant. It must have been so amazing. Yeah, it's um, you know when you get a series that really is so well written that it it competes with regular television series or movies. I just thought that it was an incredible storyline and it was a great coming of age or if you're a, a fan of Joseph Campbell, a true hero's journey for Renton. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was really an exceptional piece. That's amazing. And apart from uh, being a voice, act voice actress and of course being an actress, you're also a teacher at the Moo Park College in Los Angeles teaching acting to your students. What made you decide to become a teacher? Um, I had actually worked with the chair of my department on some staged readings. Uh, we knew each other through the acting world. We had both been guest stars on Swamp Thing, which was a fun show. <laughs> and uh, John was teaching out there and asked me if I would come teach a voice class so that I could teach voiceover. Wow. And is... Yeah. And, and basically from uh, the, the class, any current or future projects that are happening for you uh, while you're doing the teaching stuff? Absolutely. I'm always, you know, working while I'm teaching. I'm not teaching full-time. I'm just teaching part-time. Right. So it's kind of balancing my life between continuing my professional work while teaching in the evenings. I only teach twice a week. Um, but it's nice. It, it gives a good balance to my life. That, that's amazing. And out of all... The the roles that you've done, any current or projects that are happening for you or projects that will happen later in the future? Nothing I can talk about right now. <laughs> that will make a sign as non-disclosures when we work on them. And as soon as I can, I'll let you know. No problem. And yeah. of course, now, of course, the last question I have, I have here is, what advice would you give to any aspiring actor or performer wanting to make it in the industry? Voice acting is acting, so take your acting classes, take your improvisation classes. Um, you always work to perfect your craft. Uh, work with professionals when you can. Reach out to people on Facebook like Simon did. Because most people <laughs> in the voiceover world are really cool, and they would be happy to help you. So when you get your demo together, Simon, yep. send it to me and I'll take a listen. <laughs> you've just got to keep working on it. Nobody's going to come to you and ask you to work on their show. You've got to go out and you've got to pursue it. You've got to chase it. Right. So, if you love it, just go do it. That's perfect advice. Peggy O'Neill, thank you very much for this. It's been an absolute honor to talk to you. Simon, thank you so much and thanks for being so patient with my technological challenges. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem at all. <laughs> Th thank, thank you so much, you. Peggy. And anyway, for any of the fans to know uh, wh where to connect with you, whether you have uh, through a Facebook page or Twitter? I just set up a Facebook page, and it's really sad looking. I haven't done much to it, but there's definitely, you can uh, look for Peggy O'Neill, voice actor, and uh, say hi through there. Awesome. Well, you heard it right there, folks. If you want to find out more about Peggy's work, you can like her on her Facebook page. I'll put links down below in the description. And don't forget to subscribe down below to my YouTube channel and like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter as well. I'm Simon Hanna. Thank you so much for this. See you next time. Bye. See ya.